Yeah. So walk up and say, you know, so we're gonna. Oh, we do this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that won't make it. Hey, Jeff, what's up? Hey, Hi everybody, my name is Gunnar Berger and I'm the CTO of the Desktops and App Group at Citrix Systems. A big part of my job is getting to go around and talk to a lot of our cool partners. And if you know anything about me, you know I love hands-on demos. If I'm presenting, I'm showing you a demo. If I'm doing a YouTube video, I'm showing you a demo. So I don't get to demo everything that's out there just because I don't have enough hours in the day to touch everything. But I do talk to a lot of our partners and our partners show me a lot of cool demos. So I thought, Let's just do a video series on this thing. Let's take a camera, let's go talk with these partners and let's show it to you. Now I gotta warn you, it's pretty rough around the edges. It is literally me with a camera and some audio equipment and a big bright light. Um, but I hope that you can see through that and see the coolness of what these different partners are showing me and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Hello, I'm inside of Intel. I can tell you that much, but I probably already did an intro shot of that. Um, but Frank, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, who, who you are, obviously work at Intel, and uh, what you do here. Right. Um, so my name is Frank Soki. Uh, I've been at Intel about 33 years. Um, I've been in the technical compute group as part of DCG. Uh, and my focus is uh, as general manager of technical compute, cloud and client. So what do you have next to you? What, what, are, what are you showing off here? Uh, what we're showing off here is a 1U server. It has um, 11 uh, Xeon E3 processors in it. Um, one of them is actually being used as a switch, so you have 10 dedicated processors that can probably support 10 dedicated workloads for an end user, for workloads, professional workloads like CAD, for example. Now, what's in the box is, that's new that we really haven't had to this point is that Intel Xeon E3 processor. It's got four cores in it, but it's also integrated First time ever, we had a Xeon processor integrated with Intel Iris Pro Graphics, and it's mm -hmm. just crazy good, crazy good graphics, an amazing jump in performance over the last few years. Part of the demo here, and what you're seeing is, you're seeing the, the real simulation uh, or result of a CAD drawing design, right, in 3D. Okay. And you can manipulate that remotely. So now you're getting a great 3D visual experience, but you're getting the ability to manipulate that image through a tablet that's remoted to, to a server. Okay. And the reason we're able to do that is we've got a combination of integrated capabilities like the graphics I talked about, as well as some um, virtualization technologies to be able to do that happen. And it's all exposed through Citrix software. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we're about to demo here with Dave Hoff. Dave, can you uh, introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Dave Hoff. I am with Intel. I'm in our, our graphics division. It's actually called the VPG Group, Visual and Parallel Computing Group. And I support our, our data center group. And that's how we got to GPUs inside this 1U server that you and Frank were talking about. And so in this case, I've got uh, a new uh, Microsoft Surface Pro tablet, and I've got it connected via wireless, and that's connected into this server, but I could be quite a bit farther away. Um, and I've got a bunch of different apps running on the, the different nodes that we talked about in here. So essentially a bunch of different workstations. Um, in this particular case, I'm running an Autodesk product called 3ds Max, and I'm running it in the HDX 3D Pro mode. So I've got it all to myself, and I can get really rich, really interactive graphics. Um, and I also, in fact, can use this. This is fun, because this also uses CPU-based rendering to get those really nice, high ray-traced images. And so I can also use some of these same processors in here as part of a render farm. So I've got that set up where I can kick that off for, for rendering. Here's another node that I'm running, another Autodesk product. And again, I've got it all to myself. I've got effectively about five different workstations that I can get to all on my tablet here. And in this case, I've got uh, a product called Maya. It's another th Autodesk product where I can move interactively in 3D and change the scene. Cool. You and Frank also talked about CAD kind of products. So this is a product called Inventor, uh, another CAD product, and I've got You're that dedicated. You're definitely the demo guy. You got it down. You can go between the different applications. I don't. I don't have that. the the cool jacket that it, that, that Brad. I, I've I've got to get the title right. Got to get the uh, chief demo chief, officer. Chief demo yeah. dude. Um, and and a lot of these are all served up from a from a storefront. So we can also serve up apps as well. So we can use Zen app on this. We can run something like Windows Server on the nodes. And we've had four, five, six, seven users sometimes per node. Things like Photoshop. And Photoshop's a fun one because not only do we expose the OpenGL interface, but it also uses OpenCL 
for things like GPU accelerated filters. Those all get exposed through Zen App, and so the, the user gets really nice accelerated filtering in something like Photoshop. Um, so we've been talking about how there's 11, I thought there's 10, there's 11 uh, different processors inside this thing, so I just wanted to pop it off without electric electrocuting myself. <laughs> Does anyone ever use those things? You know, <laughs> those wrist straps, those are awesome. So there they are. Um, You're supposed to. There I see, obviously, 9, 10, 11. Cool. So in fact, as, as you guys discussed, the 11th is, is, is really a, a full-blown Xeon processor. In fact, what you're seeing up here, this is shared storage. So you can put about four terabytes of sort of standard SSDs there. You were asking about how is it that I can get these so dense in here. Well, these use something called M.2 SATA. And so it's actually just a little stick. It's not even the full size that mm -hmm. goes in a notebook. So there's space underneath each one of these for two SSD sticks and for, for memory. Yeah. So I I've got a little the, raised. the memory I was, trying to, I was trying to figure out what was, what was underneath there, but you're saying that's where your, your dual SATA is for each one of those Exactly, things. and so that's, that's removable. They can, they can swap those out if they need to to the, to the new processors. And then this, these four SATA ports here. So this is common storage. So yeah, for example, I've got models and scenes that are all shared on there that these guys all get to through, through networking. It's cool. So yeah, the whole box is maybe 800 watts. And again, with, with 10, 11 full processors, that 11th one, I'm running some other apps on that. I'm actually doing real-time video creation as I'm rendering those frames from 3DS Max. I'm creating a real-time sort of daily film update, and I'm running that on the, on the master. What do we have power supply-wise? Oh, 1,100 watt. Okay, so a little bit over. Mine, the ones I have at home, the reason I wanted to ask is the ones I have at home to power my Dell R720s are like 1,500 right. watt tool. Nice. My, my power bill goes up in my house something awful every time I start doing <laughs> GPU tests. So. This, this is what you should be trying. Then, and you yeah. saw, hey, look, <laughs> dual power because that's a new new concept. Um, all right. just uh, I'm fiddling since fun. You, can't, you can't stop me with the camera. No, no, on, keep, right? keep going. Have fun. <laughs> See what else you can, you can tweak in there. Yeah, let's just start shorting, yeah, in this in this particular thing. case, I've just got got standard 10 gig Ethernet going in here. So, where's you said that there's the 11th, which is a true Xeon processor, but they all have the same heatsink. So, where they're identical. There's there's oh, actually okay. no difference. I mean, oh, okay. it's just it's just really where they're where they're connected right. and what goes uh, into the uh, the 10 gig interfaces. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Well, thanks. So we just met with Frank and David Intel. Thank you guys so much for meeting with me. It was a pleasure meeting you guys. Um, but for everyone out there watching this video, I wanted to make sure that some of this stuff hit home. So what did we just see from Intel? You saw this cool box, which we talked about had 11 CPU GPUs on it, right? Well, ignore the 11th one for a second, because that's used for the internal switch. We don't really, we can't really use it for our users. What we do have is 10 CPU GPUs, right? And so what you saw in a lot of those demos was actually HTX 3D Pro. Um, and what that does is basically it's a, it's a Blade PC, right? It's just this Blade PC is allowing us to do 10 of these in a single box. So you have a user that connects over IC HDX to a full uh, a Xeon processor, which is four cores. It has some SSD underneath it. Um, and it has that Iris GPU in, in it, which gives you all those performance that you saw. But then there's the other way to use it, which I don't think we showed in the video, but I know Intel showed it to me, um, was um, using typical hypervisor with Zen desktop. And so with a hypervisor, you're gonna give that a single core and you're gonna have these four cores, which leaves you three cores remaining so, so you could pin uh, a, a GPU per user, or sorry, CPU per user. So now that means we can actually get three users per one of these cores. Then we use the graphics virtualization technology, the GBT, to share it. So we actually can still get a GPU for all three of these users. So now we can get a maximum of 30, three times 10, 30 users out of this thing using a shared GPU. So HDX 3D Pro for full GPU, really high end stuff. And then down here, we can just carve up that GPU and share it. So I hope that brings it home for you guys. See how this actually plugs in with our Citrix architecture really well. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great one.